be advised that this recorded webinar has been edited from its original format, which may have included a product demo. To set up a live demo or to request more information, please complete the form to the right. Or if you are currently not on CSC Global, there is a link to the website in the description of this video. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar. Today I'm joined by Bobby Huff and Walt Fry. Hi guys and welcome. Uh, so our topic today is CSC Security Center, what it can do for you. Now, in a nutshell, CSC Security Center is a unique tool. It's the only one of its kind on the market, and it enables you to keep full track of your digital assets and online security. And here at CSC, we say that it helps you to identify your security blind spots. So it gives you full visibility of your digital assets and alerts you to potential issues that you would otherwise not be aware of. So before we get into the what's and the how's of Security Center, I think it's important for us to look at the why. Why is it so important to have full and robust accounting of your online assets at the moment? Bobby, the security landscape has been looking a bit tumultuous recently, and especially since the onset of the global coronavirus pandemic. Would you mind taking us through what's been happening recently? Thank you, Steph. We're midway through 2021, and we've already seen some major headlines from cyber attacks jeopardizing national security and impacting major corporations at home and abroad. Cyber attacks are increasing in terms of size, frequency, and impact. Most appear financially motivated, such as the rise in ransomware, but the level of sophistication tends to side with groups linked to nation states. What's even more startling is how many of these security events are a result of open source resources, which are easily accessible to novices and advanced cyber criminals and hacker groups. Organizations cannot be complacent in terms of risk mitigation. Prevention is a bit unrealistic due to zero-day exploits and the anonymity provided by the Internet. But thinking it can't happen to me is a precursor for disaster. The pandemic saw a major shift from on-premise towards hybrid and cloud-based infrastructures. There are some challenges but we've also seen many cases where employees are recognizing the ease of use and increased productivity benefits from cloud and web-based applications. Office Depot recently surveyed 1,000 workers on the transition to remote work during the pandemic and found that successful employees heavily relied on video conferencing, team chat apps, cloud storage, shared calendars, online office suite, remote desktop software, productivity tracking, tutorials on internal processes. The increase, in usage rate in re the increase in usage rates for particular applications was staggering as well, but not unexpected, with organizations having a 58% usage rate for Zoom and 47% usage rate for Microsoft Teams. Your organization's digital assets underpin the ability for, to provide your workforce with these tools that they require to be successful and productive while working from home. If you remove one or more of these applications, how will your workforce react? Shadow IT is a bit of a broad term, but it really refers to employees of an organization using hardware or software without the knowledge of IT. Shadow IT has remained a hindrance to the IT community for quite some time now, and it's something that we often hear from clients when discussing digital assets. Bring your own device has made tracking and enforcing policies rather difficult. This blurred sense of policy adherence or nonconformity increases risk factors, particularly with internal threats such as school and employees that maintain access to systems. Taking a proactive approach and implementing measures to spread risk is essential to combating shadow IT, along with engaging employees in determining which measures are counterproductive to efficiency and productivity. IT and InfoSec are best served by reducing vendor sprawl and consolidating digital assets into a single pane of glass. Great. Thank you, Bobby, for taking us through that. Um, it's clear to see that it's more important than ever to be on top of your security of your vital digital assets. And so now I'm going to turn to you, Walt, um, taking into account what Bobby said. Perhaps you can tell us in more detail how uh, CSC Security Center can help companies deal with these risk factors and minimize them. Thanks, Steph. So managing the, your domain names is a challenge for all organizations, from small to large. These do not exist in a vacuum. They're used for many, many different purposes. There are many groups that are interested in using domain names, buying domain names, holding domain names, and for all different reasons. Now, they're being used internally to serve 
you know, internal needs within an organization, and of course external uses for everything from commerce to promotion to philanthropy. Um, global interests vary for all organizations. Everyone's going to have a different presence in different regions um, with different concentrations. Some may not have it at all. Some may be you know, concentrated in those international markets. Then there's an inconsistent accounting of digital assets. How are these being tracked? We still see organizations that are using spreadsheets to consolidate these where they may be using a model that includes multiple registrars, and they may not have certain automation in place. And of course, as we've seen over the last year plus, there's a great acceleration in change of how domains are being used. So the question is, how do we apply the proper focus? How do we properly understand what are the key names that we need to look at, to promote, to use, and to secure? So to make these decisions, there are some factors that are easily observed. Um, of course, we can look at websites that are owned, websites that are live. Right? What is serving email? Uh, what are, which of our domains are sending email? Which of our domains are being used for um, really any of those purposes that are communicating with the external world? Right? And then which are being held for intellectual property reasons, defensive registrations, perhaps future use, um, perhaps an upcoming launch, something like that. These are all things that we can think of naturally off the top of our heads. But then there are many factors that are often overlooked. And again, this is just part of the challenge of managing a large portfolio of domains um, in an organization. So there are those that are serving internal systems. Um, perhaps it's one that's been there a long time um, and isn't as obvious. It's just been running, and it's been you know, running well, and nobody's taking note of it necessarily. Or perhaps it's from an acquired organization, and it's also running something for that organization. Forwarding traffic is a big thing. Of course, you know, much of the traffic is served by search engines. Um, if you are using forwarding, that's certainly part of an optimized strategy to drive traffic to where you want it to drive. Um, but often, again, when that's set up, uh, that's something that can be considered, but it's often something that's overlooked. And then there are integrations and partnerships that are out there. And sometimes there are domains, sometimes it's subdomains, but often it's a root domain that's being used to serve that integration or to serve that partnership, perhaps a secure login or something like that. Um, again, these are relationships that become established but they may not be known to everyone, including those that are managing the domain name portfolio. So the way that we've solved this at CSC is to take a security-focused approach looking at the data and how these names are actually being used. So with our CSC Security Center, we identify your vital domains using 23 different data points about those names, things like does it have live MX records? How many A records does it have? Is it forwarding? Uh, what is the traffic on those particular names? Combining all of these factors using a statistical algorithm that we developed with 90% confidence level. By identifying those vital domains, we can then focus on those that should be properly secured. Um, and again, your focus is, is limited. We can all try as hard as we want to to cover the full domain portfolio, but really it's hard to know which ones to focus on. So this approach allows us to target those that are most vital and make sure that those are secure. Of course, usage change. Again, we've seen that certainly over the uh, past year plus, and that will continue to change. So we do regular revisions on this algorithm to account for changes in the domain landscape. Increased traffic is certainly one of those that has happened over the past year. So by taking a risk-focused approach in Security Center, we can look at this from different dimensions. Um, one is just your exposure. So across your entire portfolio, we look at the number of DNS providers um, that you have and the number of digital certificate providers. Now, of course, CSC does provide digital certificates. This is not just the certificates that are managed through CSC. These are all of your certificates um, across the domains that we manage. If you have more providers, that's going to introduce more complexity. Right? So if there is an issue, where do you go to manage the DNS? If a certificate expires, yes, you can get a certificate from anywhere, but where's your preferred vendor? Where should someone be going to get certificates? Um, and how should these certificates be managed? So of course, you know, there are certainly reasons to have multiple vendors at any one point, 
but either through acquisition or attrition or just changes in your domain name landscape, if these numbers start to grow, that introduces some risk, and that's where we recommend consolidation. And then by identifying those vital domains, we can look at the actual risks from a security perspective on those names. Um, so we identify the risk in five different categories and then do a regular reevaluation on a frequent basis to determine if those risks have changed, have more been introduced, or have any been resolved. And Bobby will talk about the categories of those risks in a minute. Before Bobby details those risks, I just wanted to give you a quick look at that vital domain listing. Um, from here, you can add names. So if there's something, certainly, that the algorithm has missed, you can add those names, and then they will then be evaluated for those risks that we're going to discuss. Uh, but this is a summary of those risks. Do you have DNS risks? Do you have digital certificate risks? Um, is your name properly locked? What's the traffic if we have that number? Um, and is it properly secured from an email perspective? So it's a quick way for you to get a look at what those vital domains are and start to dig into the details of them and start to look at those risks so that they can be mitigated properly. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Bobby to start talking about these risks in detail and why they're important to consider. Thank you, Walt. DNS has been around for about 30 years, and there are many vendors that provide DNS services. But not all of those are built for DNS management. The market intelligence firm International Data Corporation produced a report recently which highlighted 87% of organizations globally experience DNS attacks with the average cost of each attack around $950,000. Should your organization choose a risk tolerance approach that utilizes multi-DNS providers, CSC gives you the capability to monitor and track those risks from a safe distance. Enterprise digital asset portfolios can contain hundreds, if not thousands, of digital certificates. If not managed properly, these certificates can expire. Uh, which will prompt websites as unsafe, causing traffic to move away from the website and damaging reputation as well as leading to fines and losses. If these certificates expire without your knowledge, that leaves your employees and customers open to vulnerabilities such as eavesdropping, which can leak sensitive information, and even introduce security risks such as malware or ransomware. When planning an attack, cyber criminals will often conduct research in the WHOIS. Multi-lock or registry lock is available in CSC's security center, and what it does is it tracks and provides a list of eligible vital domains that can be locked to provide server-level protection against risks such as DNS hijacking or domain hijacking. One of the most prevalent blind spots for an organization is their employees. Cyber criminals have grown more sophisticated using email proficiency schemes to lure or prey on unsuspecting employees. Using CSE Security Center, we can help you identify which domains have MX records and which domains currently have SPF, DKIM, and DMARC, which is the highest level of email security recommended by CSC. Using these recommendations, we can help combat phishing and reduce the risk associated with malware and ransomware. Promoting cybersecurity is difficult when end users are perceived to be disconnected. What makes this worse is when leadership fails to recognize that they are only compounding the issue when they lack engagement across their workforce. Culture is based on promoting good practices and correcting detrimental habits. Building a security-focused culture requires trust, collaboration, and open communication at all levels of an organization. When organizations are unified on strategy and setting achievable goals, security culture enables the vision of the organization to come to fruition. CSE Security Center provides your organization with trust by tracking what users can access. By utilizing proper tracking, CSE can help your organization reduce fatigue for IT departments and track how your organizations are leveraging those digital assets which are so critical to your online infrastructure. Untracked user permissions can lead to risks such as data breaches and a host of other security-related issues and vulnerabilities. 
Great. Thank you, Bobby, for taking us through those risks and how CSE Security Centre can help to prevent them. And really, the increased visibility that CSE Security Centre gives you means that it could be the tool that is the difference between your organisation experiencing a cyber attack or not. And with the enhanced visibility that it gives you, you can take quick, decisive and informed actions when it comes to your company's online security. Otherwise, I will say thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you to Walt and Bobby, and we hope to see you next time.